This is a Canon EOS 30. It's actually not my camera, it's my girlfriend's film camera. It is a electronic autofocus SLR 35mm film camera that was released in the year 2000. It is a prosumer model and it is packed with a ton of very useful and very cool features. But it's not the camera that we're going to be talking about today. It's just kind of similar to the camera that I'm going to be talking about today in that it is an autofocus camera from later in the film era. The camera that we're going to be talking about today is the Pentax ZX60, and I don't actually have it on hand anymore, and you're going to see in a bit, but that is a more entry-level plastic autofocus SLR camera that came out a little bit later than this Canon in 2002. I see these cameras get recommended to beginners often in online spaces that have to do with film photography. These cameras load automatically, they expose automatically, they have autofocus, so there's a lot more that the camera can do to supplement some of these skills that you might not have yet as a photographer. That's not to say that things can't go wrong, but the camera takes over a few of the functions and takes some of the potential of user error out of the picture. And for someone who's getting into photography for the first time, especially film photography, they can be a very inexpensive and very easy way to be eased into the hobby. And I'm sure you have your opinion about this, right? You may think that it's better to kind of learn the tough way with a more manual camera and learn how to meter. Uh, you may agree and think that this is a great way to get into film photography, but either way, I found myself in the possession of this little Pentax camera. I picked it up at a garage sale that actually happened right down the street from me. Alongside that little Canon point and shoot that I did a video about earlier, let's stick a link up here. I took the camera out myself and I shot a test roll. And I gotta say, the results are not bad at all. Uh, the lens is totally fine. Uh, the feel of the camera is not great. It's pretty plasticky, pretty cheap feeling but it nailed exposure and it was super easy to use. After I shot the test roll and figured out that the camera worked just fine, I figured, why not put this idea to the test? I put the camera in the hands of my friend Ari. She has some experience with cameras in the past, but has never shot film before. We hung out for the day, she shot a roll of film, I developed it and scanned it for her, and she got some really great results. So I got some footage of that day of us hanging out. We got a lot of stuff to say about film photography. I asked her about her experience and overall, you know, we just had a great time. Fair warning, uh, this was the first time I used my GoPro and I set some settings not super correct, so the footage is a little ugly, but the audio should sound fine. So you're gonna have to bear with it. So hang back and enjoy. We're here with my friend Ariana. Ariana, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, what's going on, guys? My name's Ari. I also make some YouTube videos in the mental health uh, development realm. I shoot on an M50, and they're very bare bones, vlog style, talking head kind of videos. Uh, so my expertise with photography is zero. I have zero expertise, but I'm excited to help out with this one today. Maybe yeah. learn a thing or two. Yeah, so you've never, never shot film before. Do you oh. remember like ever using a film camera, like a disposable when you were, when you were younger or was that? Like really young. Really, really young. Like I seven, eight, I nine. I remember that like very vaguely as a little, little kid and that is like the only thing that most people have any sort of like experience with film other than like actually having a film camera being put in their hands, which we're gonna do today. I'm excited. Cause we're gonna answer the question that I talked about before. Uh, are the 90s and 2000s plastic fantastic uh, SLR cameras, are those really like the best beginner film photography cameras? So we have a beginner here, someone who's never shot film before and we're gonna hand her one. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of fun things today. We're gonna, we're up at a, uh, the top of a parking deck, if you could see behind us. We're gonna do some car glamour shots, and we're gonna do some portraits. I'm gonna be the lovely, handsome model. And then we're gonna go walk around our little local city here and just kind of take some street shots, just photos of whatever. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about what Ari thinks of the camera and the whole experience. This is a lot bigger than I was expecting when really? you kept saying little plastic. I truly didn't it's... know what to expect, but I didn't actually think that it was gonna look like like that. A full-fledged, like, full-body well, camera. And, and that's, like, the thing that people like about these cameras and why a big reason why they suggest them is that there's a level of familiarity when you hand someone something like this. Like, generally, people have seen something like this before. Unlike a, you know, maybe an older fully mechanical body that doesn't have a lot of controls, they're very bare bones, this is very similar to something that you would go out to a store and buy today. Right, okay. 
I'm saying right as if I knew that. I yeah. really meant, okay, I'm learning. The point is also to learn, too. That's, you know, part of the fun of it is to learn. Awesome. It's also super light. Yeah, uh, they call them plastic fantastics because they're, even though they are powerful, they are very plasticky. A lot of older uh, mechanical film cameras are made of metals. Uh, lots of things like brass, even some cameras are made of titanium, and they're super, super sturdy. And that's one of the criticisms of this type of camera is that they're not very sturdy. Uh, a, you know, if you drop that, it probably wouldn't survive it. It's, no, yeah, just yeet it off the parking <laughs> deck. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly kind of like go over using, using this and how you're gonna use it. It's really, really simple. For the most part, when you wanna take a shot, you're gonna turn the camera on. There's an on and off button right there. Got it. And you're pretty much gonna use this as a point and shoot. It's gonna be set to what's to aperture priority. So you're gonna be able to set the aperture and I'll kind of direct you on what aperture to use for kind of the different things that we're gonna be shooting. Okay. But for the most part, the camera's gonna do pretty much 90% of the work other than that. It'll meter all by itself. It will autofocus everything. So okay. one of the important things and one of the common things that I see is that a lot of beginners, the biggest thing that they mess up is loading the camera, but this makes loading cam the camera really, really easy, so I'm gonna let you do it. I'm gonna tell you how to do it, but you're gonna do it. But first, you have a choice to make. Do you want black and white or do you want color? Okay, so I think that I want black and white because I think it'll look cooler, but I'm also afraid having never shot film before, I feel like it might be a little bit more challenging to go black and white first because it puts more focus or pressure on like the composition and the yeah. quality of the shot. And, and that's like, that's not a wrong assumption. I think to kind of boil it down as plainly as I can, color is going to be more reliant on the colors and the light. Good light makes good color photos. You can generally get away with not so great light with black and white because you can rely on form. There's no wrong answer. We're gonna go black and white. Yeah, we have a really nice day. We're gonna have we're gonna have some good light regardless. And I think you're right. Black and white, I think is th that's usually what beginners like are recommended to start with too. It's just like grab a simple black and white. Just you know, just go for it. I like shooting black and white all the time. It's a lot of fun. Okay. All right. Turn the camera on. We're gonna go to this little clip right there. Okay, this is already See. different from my DSLR. So, other way, you're gonna press it down. Okay, so you're gonna open that up and you're just gonna be careful not to touch the shutter blades, which are right there. Okay. That's the one thing you don't wanna do. All you're gonna do is take the film, you are going to put it in nub side down. Okay. You're gonna pull the leader across. See where this little orange mark is? Yep. You're just gonna pull it and let it lay flat across and you're gonna close the door and that's it. Nub goes in, yep. there we go. So now click. pull the leader across. Into there. Yep, and just let it lay flat. Okay. And then close the camera. Okay, so how do people mess that up? So, on mechanical cameras, you have to, th that film leader that you pulled across has to catch on a spool. Uh, and sometimes if you don't wedge it in correctly or it doesn't line up with the sprocket holes, it doesn't catch. Okay. And a lot of times beginners don't know to look for the signs of that the, the camera will tell you, right, when you advance, you can see the the rewind lever right. will spin, and that will indicate that your film is caught on the on the take-up spool. Okay. That obviously did everything Got for it. you. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, that was pretty easy. That yeah. was not as intimidating once you explained. Okay, cool, so we're gonna get set up, we're gonna take some, do you wanna do car shots first or portraits Let's first? Let's do car. We're gonna do car shots first, we're gonna move some cars around, and then we're gonna do some portraits, and then we're gonna take a walk. You ready to go? I'm so ready. Hell yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that was such a terrible high five. It was a, it was high a terrible high five. We'll do it again. There we go. That was a better high five. Better. I'm confident now. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. You can't, like you're looking, <laughs> <laughs> looking at, looking to see the photo. Hilarious. So, so that was nice. We got to just walk around, hang out, take some photos. Yeah. We ran into our friend. We did. You know, got some, well, we didn't get any coffee because the coffee place was closing. No. I got an orange juice though. He did get an orange which juice. Which was better than nothing. But anyway, <laughs> you just shot your first roll of film. You've, you've, you've done it. Congratulations. Thank you've, you. You've done film. You're a <laughs> film photographer. I feel so 
I actually do. I was about to make a joke, but I do feel way more confident than I did. You do? Two hours ago. Okay, like, yeah. did you think that you were, you were nervous before? I was just really confused holding this. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Okay. When we, you kind of started with probably one of the most intimidating parts, which is opening up sort of like the body and putting the film in. Right. And just realizing, like, when you open this, I don't even know what you call this part. Of the back. The, the back, the right? Back, yeah. When you open the back, you kind of see all of these internals that with a digital camera you don't see. Yeah. And it put me, like, right yeah. into the frame of, oh, I'm holding something that's going to be way more manual, way more mechanical, and that made me feel like I needed to be really intentional with it, mm -hmm. which I was, but in the beginning it intimidated me because it was so different. In that yeah, way. and that's one of those things that I think... I think that that does also happen to people with digital cameras because there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of right. menu items, there's a lot, there, you know, there are a lot of symbols, and I think, in in a sense, digital can be as confusing, but this, in a very different way, can be equally as confusing and intimidating. And and you did something, you did something that that made me laugh. Uh, after your first shot, you looked at the back of the camera I did. instinctively, and that's not a you know. That's not that's not to like like make fun of or criticize you. It, it's a natural reaction to what we're used to, and I think it just goes to show, you know, when you are so used to the crutch that digital provides, something like this, no matter how easy or difficult it it is, right? Like this is inherently an easy camera to use. It still can be intimidating. Right. And I think to this camera's credit, the loading was so painless. It was. And so simple. Yeah. And despite you feeling that way about looking into the back of the camera and thinking, oh God, like what is this thing? It was, it was impossible to mess up. Right. And I think after that point, you have two things that are going on, right? You have the experience of shooting film for literally the first mm -hmm. time in my life. And that made me feel a little nervous because it feels way more intentional. But then on the flip side of it, putting into perspective that we've only really been shooting for two hours and by the end of this role I feel comfortable and I feel pretty confident holding this. I almost don't even feel like an imposter anymore. Yeah. I don't feel like <laughs> yeah. an expert film photographer. Mm -hmm. I mean neither do I but but I don't feel out of place holding this. Right. And, and the I... fact that that happened over like a 90 minute period really I think goes to the case that you were maybe hypothesizing in the beginning, which is that this is probably going to be a really good camera for somebody who doesn't shoot yeah. film. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think it's doubly so that you had someone who does have experience shooting film by your side to kind of guide you through some of the basic things. Right. And I think that's one of the things that beginners tend to really, like, they don't really realize is that there is a lot that can go wrong and they kind of dive in head first without thinking or, or or looking too much into it or you know expecting it to be as easy as being handed a camera like this or a regular digital camera and for it to go smoothly and that right. usually is not the case you see it all the time where people are like what did I do wrong and right. they have no idea but what i would say almost on the flip side is that this in in so i i vlog right like yeah. the the broadest range of my utilizing my DSLR is video. Yeah. It's not photos. Yeah. But the thing about, I think, going with a DSLR to start with is you think, oh, it's accessible, it's less intimidating, you have so many opportunities to just take shot after shot after shot. I feel like as a beginner photographer, that can almost be a problematic thing because then you're not really thinking about how can I make each shot the best? Yeah. And when I had this in my hand, I felt that in a way that I've never felt shooting digital photos. Yeah, and that's that's just a thing that people like about film in general is that because every shot costs money, there are a finite amount of them on each roll, you have to be more intentional. It forces your hand. It forces you to have to think. and. You know, we ran into a thing that I think everyone experiences when they shoot film, whether you're a beginner or someone who's been doing it for a long time, in that you had to strike that balance of, do I take this photo now or do I save this frame for something better that may or may not come? Right. And do you feel like that was 
like a big challenge or, or did you, you know, settle into like, okay, like I want this, you know, I want the experience of just finishing this role and, and kind of getting through it. I think that's where having you next to me definitely helped because so there was a point when after like the first 45 minutes or so, after I got used to the feeling of just shooting film and that very mechanical feeling of like, you know, I press the, I don't even... The button, the shutter button, button. I, yeah, I it's the, the same as, every, as, as, as any other camera. Um, I press the shutter button and I feel it and then I, I recognize, okay, something's been done here. Once all of that sort of washed away and I just got comfortable with the fact that like, okay, I'm a photographer for the next hour and I was looking around, you saw the shift where I went into comfort but then almost went into complacency. Where I was like, okay, I'm comfortable now but now I, I wanna just sit here and wait and wait for the right shot, yeah. the perfect shot. And you, you corrected that in yeah, me by and, being like, we should start moving. And to kind of explain like what Ari's talking about is we got to a spot and she was like, oh, I, I wanna like, explore this one particular space and in my head it was like we have so much ground to cover we have so much to see there are so many opportunities outside of just this and I, I said you know this place is not going anywhere there are moments that are going to come and go and that's right. part of what photography is and once you lose it you lose it and and that's it but part of the challenge and the experience is doing what we did right going to an area we're both pretty familiar with walking streets that we've walked many, many times, seeing things that we've seen many, many times, and then choosing to find and frame them in different ways. So that's, you know, all really like interesting insight on like the shooting experience uh, of in general, of just like experiencing film to, for the first time. Seeing, you know, after the smile on your face, seeing the smile on your face after you took those first few shots and hearing the little motors in the camera whir and, you know, make their all their little mechanical noises. Like it seemed to like really tickle your brain. I really did like this, yeah, and I think well, we've talked about this a lot, but like I just experienced the world so deeply. Yeah. And so to have something like this that that is so intentional, mm -hmm. but it's it's intentional. But I don't want to say that that also means that it's intimidating just because it has that sort of element yeah. to it. But I really did love this, and honestly, I think I would be way more inclined to pick up a film camera, camera versus a versus digital versus a camera digital after this because I, I just wouldn't use. My, like, I know that the, the ease of just shutter, 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 yeah, shutter yeah. on a digital camera would remove the ability that this puts in my hands to be like, you are actually capturing a moment. Yeah, physically, physically literally physically, you are physically going to be there. Yeah, Right, you are physically capturing a moment mm -hmm. and you feel that take place here in a way that you just don't feel in a digital camera, at least yeah. with my experience. And that is the, that is the truth to why people who are genu you know, generally and genuinely sick of like the facade of the digital world like I was and, and like many, uh, many others are, you know, look at the resurgence of vinyl. This, the resurgence of film photography is the same. We're sick of th the instantaneousness. Really, it takes a lot of the soul out of it. And, and I think for me, you know, speaking personally about film versus digital, you know, it took a lot of time and a lot of experience to really be comfortable with digital. And, you know, it took a very specific camera and a type of camera for me to feel that way. And, you know, a lot of like comp compartmentalizing like what I like to do with what tool and what work do I consider just fun and what work do I consider serious. And, you know, it was a journey for me. But I think that speaks to the the, the, the awesomeness of film is yeah. the, that nature, that tactile nature, the, the delayed feedback. You're not going to see these images right away. Right. You're going to have to wait. I feel like it's it's not necessarily kind to the digital world, which has its place. Yeah. But to me, it, I almost am guided toward like using the words artificial versus uh, yeah no, I, like, I don't think anyone would think that you are making an unfair claim insane it that. just feels a little like you're just capturing a two-dimensional view versus this like I just while you were talking I almost daydreamed in my head and I thought about the next reel and the next nice. being yeah, yeah, yeah. here and thinking like the next photo that I take whatever it's gonna be it's gonna come out of the back of this camera and that's gonna be developed and I'm gonna be able to physically stare at something immediately. Yeah, yeah. And you would only do that, really, with a digital camera if you were like, this is the best shot I've ever taken. Yeah, and you're, you're getting prints made and you're really going out of your way to make that happen, right. whereas it happens inherently in exactly. film. It has to happen that like, way in all film. the yeah. art is yours in your hands and you get to see what you've created in yeah. real time. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah, so I mean, I think that just speaks to like, 
that speaks to film as, a, yeah. as an art form and, a, and as, a, as a medium, right? It, it speaks to film as a medium. And I think, can you agree that as, a, as someone who has not shot film before, who has a, a general knowledge of photography, but don't, you, know, you don't consider yourself an expert or anything, do you agree that the question we were asking of, do these types of cameras, with the way that it was presented to you and the way that you used it, do you feel like you have been eased into film photography in a very approachable way through this type of camera. 100%. Okay. It's light, it was very easy to use, the film was really easy to get in the camera yeah. once you explained how to do that. The auto mode that we shot in worked very well. There was enough, I think, modality here to give you some optionality, mm -hmm. but not so much that it's intimidating. Yeah. And just carrying something also that resembles a DSLR just in the shape right. and the body yeah. made it very, I think, user-friendly and easy to approach. It's okay if you don't really have a, a, you know, a hard yes or no answer to this question, but do you feel like you'd be able to transition from that to a more manual camera easily or do you think it would you know I, in my brain it's like you still have to learn the ins and outs of, of exposure and the exposure triangle and what what setting does what and you know you're a lot less reliant on the camera but do you think it would be an easy transition or if I had handed you an all-manual camera with none of these none of this extra help as a crutch do you think you would feel the same way. If I didn't have the exposure to this first, probably would be too intimidated. But to your point, I think this being an entryway or an entry point into film photography, if you put your camera in my hand right now, I wouldn't feel intimidated. I wouldn't necessarily right. know how to use it, but yeah. I'd be like, okay, I can do this. But to start with, probably would just be a little too overwhelming. Okay, cool. Well, you, have, um, you had fun, I obviously. Had a ton of you fun. had a great time. So and yeah. I might actually want to get complete. into film photography. Oh, so do you if want you wanna... that? You can have that. I got it at a garage show. You can have it. You know it works. Take it. It's yours. It's hers now. It's her camera now. Okay. Well, there we go. Now we have another film photographer yes. in the making. Yes. I'm just going to grow the film photography community. But this one would person probably be time. like a very difficult way to scale that. Oh, it would be but really it was hard. Really, yeah, really beneficial finding... for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a free camera out of it. <laughs> Woo! Dope. Awesome. All that right. was a good high five. Yeah, that was a great high. We nailed it because the last high five was not that good. <laughs> All right, well, that's it, I guess. Um, I'm Zach. I'm Ari. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Hit the like and subscribe button, all that wonderful shit. I'll see you guys next time. Later. Bye.